you, you, you need to learn how to worship God alone. That, that, that's when it's best. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of easy to be in this atmosphere and, and to worship God, but, but to learn how to worship God when you're all by yourself, that's when God is uh, dealing with you. Um, uh, a lot of times it, he, he's dealing with the church, but, but we always all have our own personal issues and things that are going on in life. And so um, when you learn how to get intimate with God, when and th- think about think about long conversations and 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 building with with friends and and with loved ones and sitting around the table after Sunday dinner and and talking and and going out to eat and those things those kind of conversations that's what worship's like for me with God it's like sitting down with God over a cup of coffee or sitting down with God over a meal and 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 dealing and, and allowing him to speak to me and deal with me I was about to say, and me dealing with God. No, you don't get to deal with God. Amen. He might say, come let us reason together, but he, he's not saying you get to deal with me. You, you, he deals with you. And so it's, it's, so it's important. It's extremely important to have a very close, intimate relationship with God. Because it's in the closeness with God. It's, in, it's with your ear pressed up against his chest where you hear his heartbeat. You, you, you know, it's 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 this this father daughter father son kind of relationship that you have with God. And, and it's it's in this closeness that you get the instructions from life. The better that you hear, the better your life becomes. The more that you hear from God, the more your life becomes. And, and, and it's like it's like, why wouldn't you have your heart, your ear to his heart? And, and it's in it's in this place with your ear to his heart that you find the secrets of God. Yes. You, you, you know, there's people like my wife uh, uh, put on Facebook this morning that her cousin is her best friend, her sister and her cousin. And I said to her uh, this morning, um, uh, I saw the pictures, the pictures you put up of Kenya and she had this smile like you just don't know what we've been through. Right. And, I, and, and, and it, it was one of them, one of those, if you only knew kind of. Uh, and, I, and I said, I don't want to know. Right. It's that kind of relationship with God that you want. You want to have a relationship with God where other people just don't know what he said to you. He, other people just can't see what he's shown you. You, you, you know what I mean? That's the kind of relationship you want from God. And, and if you really think about it, the, the last few weeks I was talking about there's this man that's standing over here that's five years older than me who looks like me, who talks like me, but, but I don't know who that person is. In order for me to find out who that person is, I have to find out what the creator of that person is telling me to do. And, and, and so you have to study that person, but the only way to study that person is through God. He is the one who shows us our future. He is the one who creates deja vu. Amen. Amen. Future faith. We use our faith to create future experiences. And so because we use our faith to create future experiences, there's this guy over here that looks like me, that talks like me, but he doesn't think like me. And so because he doesn't think like me, I have to find out through God who he is. Amen. Amen. And so, and so there's this process of elimination. There's this testing. I feel like a scientist mixing chemicals in a lab, trying to find out what my life is supposed to be like because I, I just keep trying to touch different things and find out who Jamal is over there five years from now. And it's so important to me because growth is important to me. Amen? And so the only way, the only way I know how to grow, the only way that I, I, I mean, I've, I've had friends tell me, hey, man, I, I need some advice. And when I go to give them my advice, they say, I don't want to hear about God's way. But well, the only way I know how to grow, excuse me, my feet are a little slippery in these shoes. I don't, I don't want to have the moonwalk in front of y'all. <laughs> right. But the only way Jamal knows how to grow is through God. I, 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 I struggled at growing over the years because I was trying to do it without God. So the only way Jamal knows how to grow is through God. And so growth is important to me, but growth must be done the way it's supposed to be done and it's through God. 
uh, I, I can remember when Jesus was learning, it said that he grew in stature and in knowledge. But how did he do it? He did it through the word of God. He grew in stature and knowledge through the word of God. So if Jamal is going to grow in stature and knowledge, it must be through the word of God. The word of God is extremely important to me. It is, it is the water and the seed to my life. You, you, you know what I mean? It is the water and the seed. And so decision making is, is very important when it comes to, to living your life. I, I, I'm telling you, my former pastor said one of the most dynamic things to me, and, and I haven't let it go, is that when you take a pebble and you throw it in the, in the lake, it creates ripples. That's what decisions do. It creates ripples, and every ripple that comes from that is because of you making decision. And the decisions that you make are not always beneficial to you or the people around you. And so you got to make sure you make great decisions. Um, something I, I said a couple weeks ago, I said the thought process of selecting a logical choice from the available options when trying to make a good decision, a person must weigh the positives and negatives of each option. A person must weigh the positive and negatives of each option and consider all the alternatives. And, and a lot of times we don't. We, we don't consider the alternatives. And a lot of times when we do consider the alternatives, it keeps us stuck and not being able to move. We, we, me and Terrence was talking just now. He said he tries to mitigate risk, but he still takes the risk. And so, and so that's how I am. I, I, I know that something might hurt, but I'm going to go full head steam with it because at the end of it, it might be beneficial. And so because it's beneficial, I can't be scared not to make the choice because not making a choice is making a choice all in itself. And, and, so, and so when God shows you something and it brings you outside of your comfort zone, you have to be willing to go for this thing and after this thing, regardless of who you are, because he's trying to get you to who he wants you to be. Amen. And so when he's trying to get you to who he wants you to be, you, you, you have to be willing to step back and look at that thing and, and be like, uh, what's his name? Bobby Boucher. And so the mama said, daddy said, you got <laughs> that boy needed a helmet for real. <laughs> that boy needed a helmet for real because he, he was ready to run into a brick wall because of mama. It says, for effective decision making, a person must be able to forecast the outcome of each option as well. And based on all these items, determine which option is the best for that particular situation. And, and th these are the words that I have, I have underlined. Process, logical, logical choice, available, uh, uh, good decisions, way, positive, negatives, option, consider, alternatives, effective decision making, forecast, option, determine, situation. Out of all that stuff I just read, those are the words. And, and it's like you can get rid of all that and just say, okay, there's a process. There's a logical choice. There's things that are available to me. Those things I got to make a good decision about. I have to weigh them because some of these things are positive and some are negative. Those, those positive and ne negatives give me options. But I got to consider the options because what's the alternatives, right? And then it says, so because of the alternatives, I have to make effective decision making. I have to be strategic in the things that I, I, I decide to do. I have to forecast because forecasting gives me options again. Right? And then I have to determine my situation. That's crazy. Ooh, God. Revelation is such an awesome thing. Revelation is such an awesome thing. To, to be able to write that weeks ago, to underline it weeks ago, and then to today get a get, whole different revelation of the words that I highlighted. Um, and and, and that, that's how God works. He might give you something and give you uh, time to grow into it. That, you know, that, that's, that's called reflecting. Sometimes you learn something and then your life has to catch up with what you learned. And if you don't reflect on the things that you've learned, you're going to miss. You're going to miss some of the things that God has placed in front of you. Uh, I, I can imagine what Dorothy on the yellow brick road missed. Imagine, think about it. Just, just, just compare life to the, to the Wizard of Oz. Just, just, just compare life to the Wizard of Oz. She went down the yellow big road and she found some gems and some jewels that, and, and she went off the path a few times. But, but think about how colorful that movie is. Think about the things that may have been hidden that she missed because she didn't just take time to reflect on her journey. Sometimes it's good to go back and pick up some of the things that you missed 
So, so, sometimes we get so far ahead of ourselves that, that, that some of the choices that we make, all of a sudden this, these things reflect back in our mind. We can recollect of some things, and there's some things back there that are beneficial to us, but because it's time has passed, we don't go back and get those things. One, we're too prideful to go back and get it and say, I messed up and I missed something. Right? Two, we don't want to take the time because we think that we're ahead of the game. And so because we're ahead of the game, we, we don't want to lay down life and stop and go get some things that are beneficial to us. And so, and so, and so it's, important, it's important that you are real with anybody, you're real with yourself. Because, because who you see in the mirror every morning and who you show the world might not be the same. And, and, and I was in the back talking to Minister Brad, and I said, there's some things that I need to work on in myself. There's some things I need to identify. But at the same time, I, 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 because there's things, as, as in this position as leadership, you don't never want to present yourself weak, but you don't want to present yourself too strong that people can't touch you. You, you, you know what I mean? And so, so it's like there's this balance between weakness and strength that I have to find in order to become effective and relevant. But at the same time, like Jesus did when he stepped onto the boat, he separated himself from the people. And so and so and being able to do that, because a lot of times when you're amongst the people so much, you're taken advantage of. And if you're separated, you feel like you can't be touched. And so there's this balance that you have to come to to be able to say, OK, I'm relevant enough to, for you to touch me. But then there's, I'm separated enough for you to honor me. And I haven't been able to find the balance because I've been told over the last few weeks because, see, I'm trying to find myself. I'm trying to touch people. And some people are saying to me, well, you're unapproachable, Pastor. And I'm like, me? I'm unapproachable? And then there's other people saying that you're too close to people. And so I'm getting this two different things. And so it's like, it's like, where is growth for you? Well, one person saying one thing to you and another person saying another thing to you. And it's, and it's, and, and if you take a, a ruler, they're just same thing on two ends of, 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 of a spectrum. And so, and so where do you find balance in your life? Where do you find balance in your life? There has to be decision making, right? And so within decision making, you, 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 you ruminate and you find out who you are and you, and you touch life and you, ex, and you examine and you do these things. And it's okay, it's okay to fail. It's okay, listen, and it's okay to have victory. A lot of times we won't move because we're scared to have victory. And it's just okay, man, it's just okay. We have Christ and it's just okay. It's okay that some people think that you're unapproachable. And it's okay that some people think that you're too close. And because I'm trying to maintain uh, my, my, my genuine self, my, uh, uh, what's the word I use in office? Don't ask you? <laughs> I'm just me, man. You, you know what I mean? I'm just me. And I don't know how to be anyway. You know, over the years, my wife has tried to, you know, put some shine on me and polish me a little bit. <laughs> And she's like, babe, you, you, you know, babe, you have to, you know, do this and do that and do that. And I'm like, babe, I don't know how to do that. I, I, I just don't, I only know how to be me. She's like, you tell everything I'm, because I only know how to be me. <laughs> right? I only know how to be me. And so, and so who is the good you? Who, who is the real you is what I'm getting at. Who's in the mirror every morning when you wake up? Who, who are you looking at? Not what you present to the world but who are you looking at? Because what you're presenting to the world is not you all the time. It's this vision of you. And sometimes you have to grow up to that vision, but in growing up to that vision, you still have to maintain who you are. Just a better you. You know, back in the day, I was just a Jay-Z said, you are who you are before you got there. Right? And so there's this place that we're going. I'm trying to get to this five-year-old person but I don't want to lose all of me. You, you, you know what I mean? Because there's some good stuff in me. There's some things that are disposable, of course. We all have some disposable things. But what is my strength? And you know, you know what I found out my strength is? I love you. That's a strength to me. I might not love you correctly. I might not love you the way you want me to love you. But what I do know is that I love you. And that's a strength. And so, and, so, and so Jamal removing himself sometimes bothers him because now I feel like I'm not loving. 
And some people know how to love from a distance, and I don't know how to love from a distance. I only know how to love up close. And so it's, so it's important. So what is your strength? What is your strength? And so it's loving, right? It's loving. So, so that should be everyone's strength. And so in order for us to touch the vision, one of the things we have to know about is our strength. Think about what I said last week. Think about what I said last week. I said that, that go, go to James 3, that, 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 that the vision is perfect. It, it is, it is, l- listen, listen, I, I, I've been in jail before, and, and, and when, you make, when, you make, when you make plans in jail, they are perfect. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm talking about the 90s here, right? We, we're almost in the 20s. Don't, don't hold me accountable for my youth. But they are perfect. Like, like, like the things that are unseen are eternal, right? And the things that are seen are not eternal. And it's like when we put our little cruddy hands on the vision, we mess it up. We destroy it, right? We, 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 you, you take this filth that we are, and you take this perfect dream from God, this, this perfect vision, this, this perfect five-year plan, God puts it in, and then all of a sudden, it comes and touches insecurity. It comes and touches failure. It comes and touches trauma and PTSD. It comes and touches, come and touches insecurities and weaknesses and failure and all this stuff that you play in your mind. Uh, Terrence had a, a, a men's fellowship the other night, Friday night, and, and, it, and I was an hour and a half late. And the reason why is because the old programming in my mind was like, oh, just don't go. I ain't going to be doing nothing. And the one man, when I, when I exposed that in the meeting, the man said, but it wasn't about what you were going to get. It was about what you brought to this meeting. He said, we would have never gotten what you had if you would have never came. And so a lot of times we always think about what I can get out of something instead of what I'm bringing to the table. And so God has all done all this stuff in us up to a certain point, but all of our insecurities are speaking. And so because all of our insecurities are speaking, we can't get to this person that we're supposed to be because all this other stuff is holding us back from becoming who God has shown us in this eternal place. And so we have this eternal place, this vision, these, oh my God, can you see it? Can you see it? It's just, it's, it's just, it's, 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 it's ex- 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 exquisite. <laughs> it's exquisite. <laughs> it's glorious. Oh, my God. And then you get it, and it's like, oh, oh, it wasn't what it was supposed to do. You know why? Because it takes work. See, see look, but the wisdom from above, what is wisdom? Proper use of knowledge. But the wisdom from above is, first of all, pure, undefiled, right? And so, and so I, I looked at this. I've been, I, I preached this three weeks in a row, but I, I really looked at this last night and this morning. The, the, the semicolon is, is important. The semicolon is extremely important. But the wisdom from above is, first of all, pure, undefiled, right? And so that's consecrated, hallowed. Hallowed be thy name. God is, God is separated. He is exalted, right? So he's saying that this wisdom that's from above is pure and undefiled. It's exalted. The proper use of this knowledge brings you up. You, you, you see what I mean? The proper use of this knowledge brings you to a higher place in life. And then you have the semicolon because now all this other stuff flows from this wisdom. Right? Look, look, look. This wisdom is free from worldly, carnal, or devilish motives. <laughs> Think about what you've done with your power over the years. You have had this picture that God has shown you, it brings passion, energy, power, and excellence. Remember I taught you that, right? Passion produces energy, energy produces power, power produces excellence. So, so this, this vision creates, a, creates a, a passion in your spirit, in your soul, right? 
And then, and then it creates energy to go after what you see, right? When, you, when, you believe, when you've prayed, believe that you received already. So you're praying, you're wishing for something, you're agreeing for something, you're hoping for it, you're talking to people, this is what I'm going to do. And it was creating all this energy, and it's creating all this energy, and then all of a sudden there's power that comes along with it, and all of a sudden there's virtue and excellence that comes along with it, and then all of a sudden it finally touches your hand. And then you begin to use it not for God, but for your purpose. You begin to put your little finger in it and move things around and, and mix it up to where it fits you. And see, what you got to understand is that when it came from above, it was undefiled. And so if these things don't flow from it, it's not that it's not from God. You have to now reposition yourself back to where, you, where it was when you were asking for it. You have to reposition yourself back. You have to now go back to the beginning when you didn't touch it. You, you see what I'm saying? Because, because then it's peace-loving, right? It's peace-loving, and it's courteous. Check, check this out. Considerate and gentle. That vision, is this vision still considerate and gentle? Is it, cons is it still considered? Are you, are you considerate with the things that you have asked with God? Right? Uh, think about it. Some of y'all prayed for a spouse. Are you considerate and gentle? Some of you have prayed for a job. Are you considerate and gentle? Some of you have paid for uh, increasing your bank account when it comes. Are you considerate and gentle? Let me tell you something. I park away from the dealership because parking is an issue on my job. And whenever you park in the wrong place, multiple people come talk to you. So I parked off the lot and parked where the stores are at. Well, what, what has happened is there's this man that's homeless. And so the increase that I pray about, I'm being considered and gentle with it. And, and a couple weeks ago, I get out of the car, I had an orange in my pocket, because you know I'm, 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 I'm eating better. <laughs> today. It's the day, the decision's about today. I'm eating better. I, I did Friday night. I did Friday night. Terrence got come in. Terrence said, "Ah, oh, eat what you want. There's Pringles. There's cookies. There's chicken nuggets from Chick Fil A. Chicken, chi listen, chicken nuggets from Chick Fil A are blessed." <laughs> Shama. <laughs> so and and then he had then he had wraps, right? And I come in the door and he says, "Uh." Get what you want to eat, and there's Pringles and cookies. I said Pringles and cookies, right? <laughs> I didn't eat anything. I just drank water. I didn't drink a soda or nothing, right? Well, right before he's taking me downstairs to show me the studio downstairs, I bent down. I said, "Can I get another water?" I bent down to get a water, and the Pringles and cookies said, "Hey," <laughs> and I looked at him. And listen, 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 listen. Out, 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 out of me, I said, "No." See, 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 man has a duality. I, I don't want to get too far off, but man has a duality, right? But anyway, I had the orange. That, that's where I was at. Help me now. I got tabs open, baby. Help me now. So, 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 so I give the man, I said, hey, man, you want an orange? And uh, he said, yeah. And he took the orange, and I saw him inspect it, which he should. Just because I'm homeless don't mean I, uh, I don't have any value. But him inspecting it let me know how he thought about himself. So I went around the corner, and, and, this, and you, you know, conviction. I don't, I don't know. I, I really don't know if this was God or if it was just my own, my own conviction. So I opened my wallet, and I got a $5 bill in my wallet. And I go back. I say, here, man. And his reply is, thank you for your kindness. See, I'd already bought him twice coffee and a bagel. Right? Yeah. So the other day I park and I got to get into the building because I don't want to be late. So I go into the building. I tell my boss, there's this guy over there. I want to go buy him a cup of coffee and a bagel. So I come back through the buildings. I come back through the cut. I said, hey, man, you hungry? He said, yes, I like a, coffee, a cup of coffee. I said, and a bagel. He said, yes. See, listen, listen, all of a sudden now, after the third time, he says, hey, man, my name is Jeff. You, 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 you see something. Let me show you something. Let me, let me show you something. Then it is peace, loving, courteous, considered, and gentle. All right? 
See, see now, this week, I'm going to be looking for Jeff. Because what, 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 what has happened, Jeff now is standing at the counter where before we wasn't talking. It was just an exchange. I said to Jeff, man, you look like you've had stuff before. He said, I have. Y'all see the, uh, uh, the Christmas story? Remember we used to cuss that lamp out? <laughs> you don't want me listening to none of that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Play with my mind, y'all. Play with my mind. <laughs> Y'all don't, don't want me to listen. To, you don't want me to listen to any of that. So I'm not listening to anything. And my friend jumps in the car one day. We live in Winchester. And he says, hey, cuz, I need you to listen to this. And he puts the CD in. And it's the truth. And I'm like, what's this? I'm like, no, 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 turn that off. He says, no, just listen. Because I heard the beat first. No, 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 turn that off. Just listen. And it was all about Jesus. Uh, yep. I said, let me hold this. You know he never got it back. <laughs> So, so, so check this out. A couple months later, I'm playing it. We're knocking a wall down in, in my church. So I'm playing it in the church one morning. Pastor comes in, turn that off. Don't you ever play that in my church. He didn't listen. Turn that off. Don't you ever play that in my church again. I said, Pastor, you didn't listen. Oh, no. The scripture says don't call evil good and good evil. I said, Pastor, you didn't listen. He said, I told you don't you ever play it in my church. About four months go by. He said, you ever heard of the truth? <laughs> I said, that's what I was playing in the church. He said, oh, you got that? I said, yeah, let me hold it. I never got it back. <laughs> I never got it back. It's wholehearted and straightforward, impartial, and unfeigned. Uh, listen, listen. The good fruits, first, let me show you the good fruits. The good fruit shows through compassion. The results are therefore perfect, and every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. See, see, this vision that you have is so, is so elaborate. I mean, I mean, you, you have, you have, you have, like, given God, like, God, I desire this, and this is my hope, and so that's where my expectation is. And, and you have these detailed plans. And, and remember, I told you, we, we see in pictures, right? And so we see in pictures, and you have this vision of what life is supposed to be like. You, you know, Anastasia just wants to lay in a bed of, uh, what are they, what are they, where are you at? Sunflowers. Begonias. No, no, but you, I'm, about to, I'm about to tell them why you're not there. But, but, but the reason why she's not there anymore, because I, I, I said, what's the vision for your life? She said, just to lay in sunflowers. <laughs> it's happiness there, right? And that was her picture of happiness. So, so, so by just a quick five-minute dialogue, her expectation rose. She sees something completely different. And, and so when you don't have a vision, when you don't have a vision for your life, you might just want to lay in a bed of roses because that's what the pretty picture looks like to you. But let me tell you something. Dr. Didi said that her car this morning, she said, Dr. Didi, my, my, my pastor, right? She said that her car sat in the garage so long that her tires dry rotted. Eventually, those sunflowers are going to die. And you're going to be laying in weeds. You're going to be laying on bare, hard, cold because the seasons are going to change. Doing nothing is sometimes nothing. Doing, doing minimal things sometimes is everything. But doing nothing is nothing. And so you always want to be producing something. And so if this wisdom from up above, listen, the proper use of God's knowledge, the proper use, listen, listen to what this is. It is the consecrated knowledge of God that has been undefiled divinely transported to you. Your soul is the catcher of the knowledge. Think about the things I told you, the intellectual faculties, perception, will, imagination, right? These, these things I told you that you have that God has given to you, that he's created in you. This is the catcher of God's knowledge. To be able to see five years from now, to be able to create a vision here and see that vision coming towards you. Listen, listen, you never had that before, but you can see it. And so because you can see it, listen, listen, what about the birth? What about, ladies, 
The day you found out you were pregnant, you, you were, I, I don't know if I can suck it in that far, hold on. L listen, you was like this. <laughs> you was like this. But as you, as you grew, as you grew, as you grew, there's a scripture for this. As you grew, your expectations, expectations grew. Your expectancy grew, right? And so as your expectations, remix. remix, as your expectations grew, you began to swell into what you were ready to produce. Men, this is just an example for us. You have to get birth with a vision. You have to expect something. Ladies have a tangible, ladies that have babies have a tangible ex experience, a great analogy by nature through God to show them how to be able to bring forth something. Men, you have to now look at the woman and understand, listen, those of you who have a wife, speak your vision to your wife. She is the birthing chamber. Listen to me. She is the birthing chamber. She's supposed to produce that which I speak to her, right? The reason why, the reason why she's got caught up in my vision is because she's forgot about herself. Ladies, don't forget about yourself within the vision of the man. It's not all about the man because God is speaking to you too. Amen? As you bring forth for your husband, make sure that you cradle your own baby. You see what I'm saying? And so now, I'm, I'm not, so now the role was kind of flipped. That's why, that's why I can't lose no weight. <laughs> Come on, next slide. That's why I can't, that's why it's so hard. <laughs> you gotta be pregnant. Hey, you remember when Bill Cosby had that long sub come out of him? Y'all stop playing with my mind. <laughs> uh. <sighs> <laughs> Y'all play too much. We have guests. Put your shoes on and get your feet off the table. So, he said, I was made very happy in the Lord. This is what Paul said. I was made very happy in the Lord that now you have revived your interest in my welfare after so long a time, right? Paul said, like, like you forgot about me. Paul said, you forgot about me. He said, but, but now I'm glad that you, you revived your care for me. He said, you were indeed thinking of me, but you had no opportunity to show it. He said, I know you were thinking about me, but, but like out of, sight, out of sight is out of mind sometimes, right? And, he, and, he, and, he, and he's like, you, you know, I, I know you love me. I, I know you love me. But a lot of times you just need to, oh, Jesus, you just need to show it, right? You just need, why are you turn your head? You just look at, why, why are you crying? You crying? Huh? I'm pregnant now, not you. Don't worry about it. I got it. I'm going to carry this thing. It's not natural. Oh, it's super. It's super. <laughs> not that I'm implying that I was in any personal want, for I've learned how to be content. Satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed or disquieted. Let, let me tell you something about this place. There's a struggle to get to this place. There's, a, there, there's trial and error to get to this place. The Bible says we fight to enter into his rest. And if you think that you're going to read something on a piece of paper and think, because, because let me tell you something. I can tell you where I boast three, four years ago that, that this, this scripture says, for I learned how to be hungry and full. And I'm, godliness with contentment is great gain. Let me, you're going to grow from that place. And you're going to grow, if, you, if growth is important to you, not goals, but if growth is important to you, you're going to get to a place where you've grown to where it's uncomfortable again and you're not content. Because, because, because when you vision cast, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you, a lot of times you want to touch something that you don't even know what it is. Have you ever been hungry and be like, I'm hungry, but then you open the refrigerator and be like, yeah. but I'm hungry. You want water. I want more. Ice See, cream. 
I know you're from Baltimore, but you got to learn how to talk like Hagerstown, Tish. <laughs> <laughs> Stop playing with my mind, y'all. <laughs> Satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed or disquieted. It, it, it's like, it's like, it, you know, the baby stops crying for a bottle when it's old enough to get the bottle. You're gonna always get the stages where you're crying for your bottle. You're going to be always in places where you've messed up and you're crying to be changed. Right? You're always going to get to another point if you're growth oriented. If it's about growing, you're always going to get to a place to where you're the baby again. And, 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 and Christianity tells you that you're not allowed to be disturbed or disquieted. We have Jesus. But, but, when, but when growth, when growth is important, you grow to a foreign place. You grow to an unfamiliar place. If it wasn't unfamiliar, you'd already be there. You have to learn how to now be undisturbed in this new you, in this new place. And, this, and, 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 and so what happens, the reason why you get disturbed and disquieted is because all of a sudden your ledges got a little higher and you can see a little further. There's this picture, there's this picture that, that, that I have and there's this man and he's standing, and the ledge is up here, and he's looking at a wall, right? And then there's this other man who's standing on a few books, right? And he can barely see over the top. But then there's another man who's standing on books and money. And he can see clearly out of the window pane. See, that's a growth process. L listen, it's not... In order to get to that person, in order to get to that person, this person who can't see needs to get on top of... Some that enables vision. You have to be enabled to see, right? And if you're not enabled to see, come on, come on, come on, let me show you something. He, he, says, he says, I know how to be a base and live humbly in straightened circumstances. I know also how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. I have learned in any and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation, whether well-fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency enough to spare or going out or going without and being in one. This next slide, look at this. He says, because I have strength for all things through Christ who empowers me. Amen. See, see, see you, have to get, you have to get with something that enables you. It has to enable you. Go to the next slide. Look, look at this. He says, I have strength for all things to, 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 strong, to become strong enough to have strength or fortitude sufficient for some task. Next slide. Look at this. To call someone to have the ability to do or experience something. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hey, 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 hey. Listen, what, what, what's, what's the boy's name? Um, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's, the, what's his name? Uh, Chris Tucker. Didn't he tell you not to touch a black man's rape? Don't touch. <laughs> he told Jackie, don't you touch. I took vitamin B this morning. I'm a little amped up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> to come, we have guests. Hey, listen, sir. We we don't always act like this. We we are very, you know, we are very. <laughs> Who cleared their throat? Deacons. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> to make someone able to give capability to, to enable, to strengthen, to empower. Go back two slides. Listen. Amplify. He says, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amplified Bible opens up the scriptures. That's why I like it so much, because it gives you other points to teach. Right? So he says, I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. When you get to this place of growth where you become disturbed and disquieted, you have to now, listen, remember the three stages of faith I told you about. There's intellectual faith, right? There's emotional faith and volitional faith. Intellectual faith says, okay, I know God exists. 
All right? Listen, Jesus said, Father, I know that you hear me always. That's an intellectual, right? That's almost a, vi- a volitional. It's almost two. Because, because when it seems like God is not listening, you have to know, li- listen, listen, when, when, when he saved you, when he saved you, it, it was like the training wheel. It's like, like him taking the training wheels off and he's got his hand on the seat. And you, you think you're doing it, but you know it's God. Emotional faith is when he takes his hand off of it and, he, and you looking back at God saying, I got it, I'm doing it. And he says, watch out for that tree. <laughs> right? And you, and you dip a little bit and you didn't fall? Oh, see, 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 this is one of the most dangerous places because this is where you think you're starting to do it. This is where you start to think you're doing it, right? And so, now, and so now you get into this volitional place because you have now given responsibility and you've shown that you're able to ride your bike across town away from home. And when you get out there in that strange place, see, when we were 9 and 10 years old, we could, li- we could, we could go wherever we wanted to all day. I left my house at 9 o'clock in the morning and had to be home at 5. At 9 and 10 years old, think about your baby at 9 and 10 years old now roaming for eight hours. The devil is a liar. <laughs> see, see, this volitional faith is where you grown. And you have to remember, you have to remember that now that I'm in this growth place, that I can touch God, that, 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 that there was an intellectual faith, there was some emotional faith, and now, now I have to volunteer my faith. I have to get to the place where I'm volunteering my faith in God. Right? And so this is where, when it becomes foreign, I say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can do all things. You stick your chest out a little bit. You know why I can do all things? Because he's empowered me. Go, go two slides forward. Because he's empowered me. Because to have the ability to do or experience something, to make someone able to give capability to, to enable, to strengthen, to empower. Because I've been empowered. The blessing is the empowerment. He saved you to empower you. He sa- Listen to me. He didn't save you for you to become dry rotted. He didn't save you for you to walk in fear. He saved you for you to be empowered. He saved you for you to bring forth your vision. He saved you because the vision given glory to him will allow somebody else to see him in their life. Listen, because if that's the case, he could have saved you, beam me up, Scotty, and you could have been gone, right? But he left you here for a reason. And the reason why he left you here is because Jesus says that I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And so abundant living is just not money. Abundant abundant living is touching the things that you want. Abundant living is having the whole piece of the pie, the whole thing, shalom blessing, that everything, nothing missing, nothing broken, all things working, all things are working for my good. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about he's intentional. That's what I'm talking about, that, that this thing, this, this, this power, this divine power, this spirit is flowing through you and for you. And God is not working against you. A lot of times we think that God's working against us because he's trying to strip things out of your hand so he can put something else in it. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, baby. Come on now. Turn the radio station back. <laughs> you turn the heat on. <laughs> Come on, say it. Say it. I didn't ask for you to say it. <laughs> he says, I give thanks to him who has granted me the needed strength, and made me able for this. Somebody say, I'm able for this. this. Yeah, yeah, whatever it is, I'm able. able. Yeah, yeah, whatever it is, you are able. Think think about it, think about it. What is it that you want that you, you haven't gotten because you've been scared to go for it? What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? What do you want? What do you want, Ashley? Yeah, what do you want? 
What do you want? I know what you want. Don't be scared to say it. I mean, it's complicated. No, yeah, but, really but, 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 but condense it. I guess to, to connect, to help people through my experience. Uh, no, 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 don't give me the Christian. Don't give me the Christian. Genuinely, genuinely. Okay, but what, what do you dream? What is your dream? What do you want to do with the gift and talents that's been given to you? I mean, inspire other people to... Say it, say it, say it, say it to what? To inspire? sing. Sing? You don't want to sing. That's all I see from you is oh, about, yeah. about singing, right? That's like the, that's the, 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 the tool, right? The, so how do you help more people if you don't become bigger, right? Is it just about Hagerstown or is it about... Everywhere, right? So in order for you to become what you know and see, you got to take your vision a little higher. In order to take your vision eye higher and make it relevant, you have to add value to yourself, right? Did your, did your show, is your show over? Um, well, I did do a show, yes. The, what's it called? You got some more? I do. Can I get free tickets? <laughs> see, 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 sometimes, sometimes you do need a coach. Yes. Yes. Think about the eggs in the frying pan I told you about like seven, eight, nine weeks ago. Right? right? We see in pictures. Ms. Margot cheated. Ms. Margot cheated. You think I didn't know you cheated, Ms. Margot? I know you cheated. You knew where I was going. I asked Antoine, has he ever cooked eggs? Remember, I put the fry eggs in the frying pan on the screen. Have you ever cooked eggs? He said, yes. I said, okay, picture yourself cooking the eggs in a restaurant. I said, what do you see? He said, I just see the eggs. I said, sit down. Because he didn't see the restaurant. He didn't see the kitchen. And so because of that, but then I asked someone else. I said, okay. They said, okay, I see the restaurant. What's it look like? And they said, uh, there's other people in the kitchen with me. Who was that? Somebody else. They might not be here. They played hooky. I called you out. You didn't see nothing. You could you. <laughs> You didn't even see the eggs. <laughs> but then I asked Miss Margot, do you see a five-star restaurant? And she said yes, and she described it. Even though she cheated, she had, a, she, had a, yeah, she had the ability to see. And sometimes you can take, shortcut, take shortcuts and see because you have the knowledge of where someone's trying to go. If you know where God's trying to take you, you can get with God's knowledge and use it properly and take a shortcut to where you're supposed to. Oh, my God. Come on, come on, come on. I'm so grateful to Christ Jesus for making me adequate to do his work. Somebody say, I'm adequate. I'm adequate. Somebody say, I'm adequate. I'm adequate. Yeah. He went out on a limb, you know, and trusted me with this ministry. And listen, listen. He said, I'm making you adequate, but I better be able to trust you with what you're asking for. If you're asking for something, listen, if you're asking me for something, this is what God's saying. If you ask, this is what the scripture's saying. If you're asking me for something, make sure you use it for me. Yes. It's not about you. If it's not for his glory, it's going to become stale and stagnant. It's going to go away. You're going to find yourself back in the pagonias, sunflowers, and daisies. Because what you desire, other things are going to grow up. Dandelions. Remember, the vision's perfect. When you put your little hands in it, this is where the weeds come from. Come on, come on, come on. Let me move along. This might be too much. It's a lot. All right, I can touch it. I can touch it. Also to enlighten all men and make plain to them what is, what is the plan, right? Also to enlighten, Ephesians 3, 9. Also to enlighten all men and make plain to them what is the plan. What is the plan? L listen, God's, God's wisdom, God's knowledge, God's presence is coming to reveal to you the plan. He does. You just have to get in agreement with the plan. See, see, it says regarding the Gentiles and providing for the salvation of all men. See, see listen. The plan through Christ Jesus was to redeem the world, right? And so because the plan with Christ Jesus was to, was to redeem the world, you still had to agree with the plan. You still had to agree with the plan in order to bring salvation. If you don't agree with the plan of salvation, I don't know if Jesus was real. I don't know if he resurrected from the dead. Well, you don't agree with it, so the plan's not being revealed to you. 
See, see, faith reveals the hand of God. See, see, the, see, the requisite for God is faith. He deals the measure of faith to all men. You don't believe because you've chosen not to believe. It's not that God didn't say, here, here's my son. Here is the manifestation, the revelation, the self, the self manifestation. Come on, Miss Alice, help me out. The self manifestation. You don't remember, do you? Neither do I. The self manifestation. Come on, Miss Alice. Self manifestation, revelation. Uh, huh? Speak up, please. Of God in verbal activity. The self manifestation, revelation of God in verbal activity. That's what Jesus is. The manifestation, self-revelation of God in verbal activity. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God, Jesus is the manifestation, I'm, I'm, repetition, right? What's the first principle of teaching? Repetition. The God, it, Jesus is the, the, the self-manifestation, revelation of God in verbal activity. Self-revelation, manifestation of God in verbal activity. Self-revelation, manifestation of God in verbal activity. See, when you learn something, it becomes a part of you, right? And when it becomes a part of you, you can recall that thing at will. He is the self-revelation, manifestation of God in verbal activity. He is the self-revelation, manifestation of God in verbal activity. See, when you're able to recall it at will, that means that it becomes a part of you. If I got to ask her again next week, I didn't learn it. I just played with it today. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? Amen? It says, regarding the Gentiles and providing for the salvation of all men, of the mystery kept hidden in, through the ages and concealed unto now in the mind of God, who created all things by Christ Jesus. Listen, listen, the, he has plans for your life that has been concealed from you in his own mind. And when, you, and, and when you grow up into these things, when you grow up into the, 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 the notches of his will for your life, it, re it releases, it releases, it releases your next stage. Amen. And, 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 and when you grow, listen, listen, this is, this is, this is goes back to the chemist. This goes back to touching and, and experiencing and, and trial and error because, because if you don't, if you don't test life and you just don't dry rot, if you don't test life, if you don't mix, be the chemist of your own life, if you don't think deeply and ruminate and meditate on the things that God has shown you about yourself, if you have grown to a point and don't reflect on life, you are going to miss what God has, wants to do in you. Don't, don't, you, don't you let frustration. L this is what I heard last week. This is what I heard last week. It said that frustration, frustration sits on the outside of your chest looking for a hole to produce discouragement in your heart. It, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is looking for a leak. It's looking for a hole. And you got to deal with frustration immediately. The same way as, as listen, at, at the same way that God is, is, is bringing things and you're moving towards things of God, there's something that's in you and outside of you trying to keep you from the things of God. And when that thing comes and rests on your chest, you, listen, listen, <laughs> sorry, y'all. Listen, listen, you know what that reminds me of? Remember years ago when the cicadas were everywhere? I, I, I'm working in Leesburg, right? Look, look, I'm, I'm riding in my car. <laughs> I'm riding in my car, and, and cicadas are everywhere. So I see this one cicada come right at my grill, right? So I'm like, dang, I hit that thing. I'm riding for about five minutes. That thing crawled through my car and came out of the, the, uh, the dashboard. Listen, listen. It ain't nothing but a bug this big, but when it comes to bugs, I'm a punk. <laughs> right? That thing come out of the dashboard and jumped on my chest. <laughs> oh, that's <a> all! <laughs> I said, ah! Oh. Oh, it was just sitting there, I said, ah! Oh. I pulled the car real quick and got that thing off me. That's what you gotta do to frustration. Come on, that's what you got to do to frustration. You got to get that stuff off of you. 
You got to get that stuff off of you. Yes. If you don't get that stuff, if you, I don't know what it was going to do to me. The things that, listen, they only come around with like every 18 years. They are aliens that have been planted. It's a conspiracy theory. That thing is an alien. <laughs> Come on, give God praise. I'm gonna give God praise. <laughs> You're silly. <laughs> Somebody say, Lord, I want to touch the vision.